Yo, real ones know. Aunt Mo, George Row Mo, Pretty Tony, the original. Coming back, I wanted to speak about this uh, Nick Cannon situation real quick. Last week, Nick Cannon was quote unquote or allegedly made some anti-Semitic remarks in an interview that he did with uh, Professor Griff, formerly of the Public Enemy Rap Group. He was canceled, so to speak. He was fired from Viacom, the company that owns VH1, BT, MTV. So what he had to do was apologize, <laughs> like uh, like they make everyone do. And he um, had an interview with the rabbi, Rabbi Abraham Cooper on his canon classes show that he does on YouTube and I wanted to touch on that conversation really quick the things that Nick said what it seemed to me was mainly that he praised Minister Louis Farrakhan it seemed that the Abraham Cooper guy had a real disdain for the minister um, he said that he was evil and he propagates hate and all these so-called conspiracies about the Jewish community is all Louis Farrakhan, which I disagree with. Um, these these uh, so-called conspiracy theories don't come from Louis Farrakhan. It comes from um, the white supremacist, the hardcore white supremacist community. But Abraham Cooper, he 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 said that Louis Farrakhan was evil, and um, that was the main thing that I think from what I could gather that made him feel like Nick Cannon was anti-Semitic or let him tag Nick Cannon as anti-Semitic, which I noticed seems like when you say Minister Farrakhan's name in a uh, positive light, you're tagged by that community as anti-Semitic. I think they did that to the public enemy group. They said they had anti-Semitic lyrics, but nobody could find the lyrics. So what it seems like is that uh, what I what I do remember is they had uh, Louis Farrakhan. They had a, a a clip of him in the album in a couple of the albums. So as far as I can see, that's the reason why they labeled them anti-Semitic. But anyway, about the interview, he he kept speaking about Louis Farrakhan in a negative light. And Nick Cannon told him, "Hey, Minister Louis Farrakhan is one of the last and one of our only respected black leaders." that has actually done things within the black community. He gave knowledge and wisdom and actually his organization goes into the inner cities, into the hoods or ghettos for a lack of better terms and gives back. And he um, responded, yeah, he's a great orator. Yeah, he, he speaks well and blah, 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 but he spews hatred. And I found it very interesting that he also in this uh, interview he kept referring to a, a man by the name of Simon Weisenthal. And his uh, uh, nickname was the Nazi Hunter. So that was, I think he speaks up as if it was his mentor. And I think he survived the Holocaust. He alert, he supposedly came over and marched in, civil, in the civil rights movement. In, uh, or so he says. But... He's uh, called the Nazi hunter, and I found that very interesting. He's the Nazi hunter. So with that, him being the Nazi hunter, so he what he did was went out and helped capture or arrest former Nazi troops or soldiers or things of that nature. So he went out and helped capture people. Who had done who had oppressed his people which is which is commendable right but he still goes on to bash Louis Farrakhan when Louis Farrakhan only speaks ill of people who have oppressed his people and community which he he never they never touched on the things that his community has done to our community um he never touched on the atrocities that his community has enacted upon our community because just like he said the Simon Weisenthal left Nazi Germany in the Holocaust and came over here and so-called marched in the civil rights movement black people black troops were frontline 
in World War II. And you can see tons of pictures online of uh, black troops being the first ones in two concentration camps and saving those children that had been tortured or beaten or whatever and saving people and, you know, doing all these things and still coming back to the United States and being oppressed against not only by Americans, but black soldiers and black people in general weren't allowed into Jewish stores and Jewish communities. Black people weren't allowed. They never speak about this, but there were Jewish slave owners. There are Jewish companies here in this country now that got their riches from owning slaves, from the free labor that came off of the backs of uh, people that were slaves here in this country. They never speak about that. There were Jewish people who ran the um, slave auctions. They never speak about that. There were Jewish people who were a part of the Ku Klux Klan. There were Jewish people who made Ku Klux Klan robes, especially here in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. There were Jewish people that made the robes and sold them to the Klan. So I found it very interesting that they never brought that up. And, you know, and we have to go out if we say anything around about the way of something that they feel disrespectful, they tag us anti-Semitic. And another thing Nick said was he said the original Jews were black. And I think that's another thing that may have touched uh, a nerve. And usually when people say those things, they're uh, labeled anti-Semitic. I think he said that Nick said that they weren't the real Jews. I think that's the word that he said. But the original Hebrews, you can find pictures, all types of writings about them. The original people from that land were jet black people with uh, kinky hair. They but they but they like to dance around that. And if you look up what Semitic means, it means people originating from North Africa. So who's to say what's anti what's Semitic and who's Semitic? Who's the who who get who has the call on that? So I found that very interesting. And for him to feel so strongly about you have to watch the interview, but him for him to feel so strongly about the Simon Rosenthal person who was the Nazi hunter, who I think he um also said that he went back to uh Vienna. Right where they had the uh, concentration camps and he set up his office there. Oh, he may have been speaking about another guy, but he speaks so highly of the Nazi hunter. But he wants to denigrate the minister for speaking about people who enacted injustices to his people. And another thing I found interesting is um, Nick Cannon. He made a statement. He said he hate he doesn't hate anyone. The only only thing he will he says that he hated and he wouldn't for uh, he wouldn't apologize for it was he hated white supremacy or white supremacist and the um, the rabbi brought up Martin Luther King he said Martin Luther King said you could beat hate with love and I found that interesting because every time Nick brought up them trying to work with the minister or speak with the minister to have an open dialogue with them. He kept referring to him as uh, evil and saying that he wanted to keep people divided. I found that very interesting. He didn't want to take his own advice to Nick about referring to Martin Luther King, but he wanted Nick to take it when Nick said that he hated white supremacy. So when we're speaking about one man, he he can't forgive or uh, be open to a dialogue with him, but you want Nick, who's one man, to take the Martin Luther King approach to a system that oppresses black people and that has oppressed black people for hundreds of years. We've seen people be seen babies get murdered, uh, uh, kids and children murdered, eugenics, all types of things that they've done to us. They've created laws and all types of statutes to keep us oppressed, uh, all types of things. So I found that very interesting because what it seems like is that particular community, they, they I, you never see them or hear them or anyone making them take accountability for the things that they have done. But they are 
the ones who are judging and placing punishment upon other people when they feel that they've been wrong. So I think for us to have a they, what they've been hashtagging now is our tough conversations. We have to have these tough conversations because we had there were the truth of the matter is there were Jewish people in the Confederate Army. We can't find a black Nazi. There were Jewish slave owners. There were Jewish people that ran the slave auctions. We never oppressed anyone. We never oppressed that their people. Never. But they've been a part of our oppression. So before we're being made to apologize and have our dignity shot down, it has to be fair and we'll be truthful about everything. And then we can move forward. We can't work together. And that's another thing. Nick constantly asked, hey, can we work together? How can we work together? He never said he, he was he was very he never said, hey, yeah, yeah we can work together. Uh, he made one statement. He said, hey, we'll meet again on Monday. So he he's very clear that he he really doesn't have any interest in working with black people, to be honest. They don't have interest in working with black people, which is fine. But you're not going to jump out of here out the window which they've been doing lately. They did it with Deshaun Jackson. They tried to do it with Ice Cube, and they just did it with Nick Cannon. You're not going to jump out here and then try to label us all these things and then so-called counsel us when we've done nothing to your people. You can't find out in history that where we've done anything to you, but we can find it right over here in this country within the last 50 to 100 years of your people violating, oppressing us. So we must always speak truth to power and we can have honest conversations and these tough conversations and put the whole truth out on the table and then we can address it and then we can move forward. Peace.